Today I want to do kind of a faster paced video because I know mine tend to drag on and this is going to be a 10 minute challenge. I want to do quite a few of these over the coming months where even in some cases we're out there on location to see if I can set up in just 10 minutes or less. But today we're going to start a little bit easier and focus on the editing. And therefore if we're trying to keep this at 10 minutes I don't have time to explain what I'm doing necessarily. If you want to learn more you can check out my Deep Space course or my Astro Post Processing course on my website or my Patreon as well. Those are all going to show you how I'm doing this and explain actually what I'm doing. And the reason I love doing it this way is because you don't have to learn about PixInsight or any of those other applications. Especially if you're a photographer, you can use the tools that you already know and get really spectacular results with a little bit of knowledge. So again, I am going to kind of fly through this today hoping I can complete the image in just 10 minutes. We'll see though if that's a possibility or not. I think we got everything we need here. Now I need to sync all these settings and then finally save them as TIFF files so we can stack them together. I'm going to cut the video when I save them just because that's no point sitting around here waiting for this to save. But once this is complete, then we'll be ready to go and I'll meet you guys over in our stacking application next. All right, so my images have finished saving and click done here. And now we're ready to begin our stacking. For that, I'm going to use Sequator because it's the fastest thing to use. It works well too most of the time. And you guys should all know how to use this one by now. This is kind of fun. You know, if you are fairly good at doing your editing, you might want to give this a try one day and just see how fast you can go. Because that's the whole point today, just to see, you know, if we can actually handle a challenge or not. I'll probably leave it running here just for the heck of it. Put us a little bit more up against the clock. Yeah, so like I said, I'd like to do some where I'm actually out there on location as well. And we'll see if I can actually set up my tracker in 10 minutes or less, do the polar alignment, both for deep space and Milky Way photography. That's going to be kind of a pain to film though, so that'll take a little while longer to get done. I'm also going to do a Milky Way editing challenge where I try and blend a complicated foreground with a track sky and show you how quick you can do that if you know what you're doing. But really the biggest thing here, this isn't to show off or anything, it's just to show you that with a little bit of practice, you can really go a long way. And that's like everything else, you know, when you're just getting an astrophotography, it takes months, if not years, to really master it. But you really the big problem we have is just that there's a lot of clouds for a lot of us. Even here in Kanab, which should be perfect location. We've got a lot of wind at night, which isn't good for deep space work, and all the smoke coming over from California lately has been causing problems. And really that's the biggest problem we have with astrophotography. You know, if you want to do landscapes or anything else, you can shoot year-round, regardless of the conditions really. But for astro, of course, we need perfect conditions, and those are hard to find. But at the very least, uh, again, if you check out my courses, I even include raw and TIFF files, that way you can practice even if you can't go out necessarily and capture your own images just yet. And this is actually taking a lot longer than I wanted it to. We're already here about 3 minutes and 30 seconds it's looking like. That should just leave us enough time though when we get into Photoshop hopefully. Alright we got our stacked image. I'm gonna click open and we'll go right into Photoshop. I probably should open that sooner but oh well. And there's a couple different things I want to do here in Photoshop. I want to bring out the galaxy more. I want to reduce the brightness of the stars, that way you can see the galaxy better. Do a little bit of contrast and saturation, and I think we'll be good. But generally the first thing you want to do is a series of curves and levels to fix any kind of weird color cast or anything like that. In this case it looks pretty good to begin with. I'm going to start off with a curve layer though, and by using the hand tool here, I can selectively choose what I want to make brighter and what I want to make darker, but sometimes it becomes kind of a hassle. That doesn't look too bad right there. And we have some of this purple glow here at the bottom of the frame. That's because I was only shooting 70 second long exposures with my Nikon D750, and that one does have a purple glow. There's ways you can get around that, but I'll probably just crop it or make the sky a lot darker, and we'll go from there. That doesn't look half bad in terms of the contrast. The core is a little bit brighter than I'd probably like, but we'll go with that for now. And I'm having a mind blank right there. 
What I'm trying to do now is fix any kind of color cast because it is a little bit strong. That looks better, I think. And then we're going to add a star reduction layer at this point because overall things are starting to look fairly good. For our star reduction layer, we just need to select all the stars without selecting the galaxy, which is kind of hard to do, but I'll make the best of it. Once we have all of our stars selected, then I need to make sure it's as big as the star. Usually it's a little bit too small. So if I expand it, there we go. And then we'll feather this selection just a little bit. I do have a lot of chromatic aberration in this case. I'm not too worried about it, but that is something you want to think about. That's one area where if you get a telescope rather than a telephoto lens, that might help you out. But in this case, we should be okay. And in fact, for my star reduction, I should probably zoom in before I do this. And the further you go here, the smaller the stars are gonna be. We're using filter, other, minimum, but you might also start to introduce some artifacts. So you kind of have to play this one a little bit more modest than you would normally do. And I think that's gonna work for us. Yeah. All right, so there's our before and after. See how much better the galaxy stands out? That's what I was going for. At this point, maybe we can do a little bit more. I don't want to do that. The image is starting to fall apart a little bit because, I, again, I didn't have very much exposure time. There were only 70 second long exposures with a very slow lens. And, you know, if I had more data, I would get a better result, but this is about as best I can do. Right now I'm using selective color. This is a great way to just make small adjustments to your image. And you can really, I mean, it's gonna be subtle no matter what you do, but you can really take the colors a long way if you're careful. And this can really help your images overall. There's also the color balance tool with the little scales here. If you're having a weird color cache you can't seem to get rid of, this is one way to attempt to reduce it. It's not the best way, but it works in a pinch. You just gotta be careful because you can really mess things up quickly. And that doesn't look half bad. All right, I'm starting to run close here on my time. I think I'm gonna try a high pass filter to bring out more of that galaxy. This is just one way to do it. When you bring up your high pass, you just adjust it until you can kind of see the dust lanes more. Although you can always tweak it further. And then you have to change the blending mode here from normal to, I believe it's overlay. It's been a while since I've done this. And then finally, I don't want this to apply the whole image, so I'll add a layer mask, invert it with controller command I, and then just use a little white paintbrush and paint in the core, like so. And this is really important for everybody because I see this all the time. People will do like adjustments like this, whether it's dodging and burning or whatever, and they don't blur out this layer mask. And it looks really fake when they post online if they don't know what they're doing. So what I always recommend everybody do is when you do an adjustment, blur the heck out of the layer mask. That way nobody could ever tell you even did anything. Because there's nothing worse than seeing a Milky Way photo and you can clearly tell somebody just dodged the core of it. This is kind of similar. There we go, that's not terrible. All right, we're really kind of close. I think we'll head over now to Camera Raw. And then we'll do a quick adjustment there. I don't think we're gonna have time for the Nick collection today, which is unfortunate, but we'll make the best of it. Right now, I'm just trying to give the image a little bit more kick. And if I don't like the color cast, I can alter that slightly. If I have any kind of noise reduction, now would be a good time to fix it if you haven't done so already because we didn't really have that many images as we discussed. There's a little bit of color noise coming through. I gotta make sure I clear that out as well. That looks fine. And according to my clock, we're just about out of time. I should have an official clock on the screen there, but let's crop it real quick. And then I think we'll call it. All right, and there's our final image in just 10 minutes or less of the Andromeda Galaxy. And the whole point of this video was just to show you that with a modest setup, you know, I'm using a little tiny star tracker, a Nikon DSLR, and a telephoto lens, I was able to get a pretty cool shot 
and I only spent about 10 minutes editing it as well. It could be better, but obviously this is more of a time challenge than anything. So hopefully now you see how quickly you can do things with a little bit of practice, and you can go out there now. Like I said, the biggest problem we have is just that there's a lot of clouds usually, or rain, or whatever it is. But if you want to learn more, and to see me actually explain what I did today with all these different adjustments, again, check out my Deep Space course, my Patreon, or my Astro Post Processing course. Either way, I guarantee you're going to learn a lot. And this might be kind of fun too, uh, if some of the other guys jump in, do these 10 minute challenges. I was kind of inspired by Gordon Ramsay. He does his 10 minute cooking challenges and I figured if he can cook in 10 minutes, I can make a photo in 10 minutes. But that's all I've got for you today and I'll see you guys in the next video.